Renesos heat pump uses the principles that are applied in your fridge at home to move heat from one place to another. Being an air source heat pump, it's moving the heat from the air in the surrounding environment where it is standing. Uh, it gets absorbed by a refrigerant that is sitting at about minus 50 degrees and it takes the heat, compresses it, any gas that gets compressed gets hot and it transfers that heat then into the heating system in your home for domestic hot water or for space heating. An air source heat pump moves heat from one place to another. An air source heat pump will take it from the air in the ambient around the, the box and move it to a usable space in your house for hot water or for space heating in your radiators or underfloor heating. An air source heat pump isn't a true renewable in that it does use some electricity to run. The compressor and the fan use electricity. Now, when the electricity is being used, you will get a multiple of that amount of energy back as heat. So for instance, its efficiency is known as the COP, and that would mean for every one unit of electricity I use, I might get an efficiency of three, which means I'd get three units of heat back, which means that of that, because I've used one to get three, only two are renewable. On air source heat pumps, there's two, effectively two types. You've got air to water and air to air. Now an air to water heat pump will take the heat from the air and put the heat into water so that you can use it in your radiators or use it in your underfloor heating. Air to air is effectively air conditioning, but used in the reverse of air conditioning to heat your house. So you would have air handling units in the, in the room, a bit like you might have in a hotel room, where you turn on the unit and it's blowing warm air into the room to warm it up rather than having radiators with water in them. The difference between an air source heat pump and a gas boiler in, is that, first of all, a gas boiler is fitted in your cupboard or in a plant room away from the house. You don't really see it. It just gets on with things in the background. Whereas an air source heat pumps is a box that will sit outside your house and have a fan in it. So you need to have a bit of space for the air to move around. The flow temperatures are also different. So the boiler will make hot temperatures and you will be able to have a smaller hot water cylinder and potentially smaller radiators. Whereas the air source heat pump, low flow temperatures will need a bigger volume of water and also a slightly larger set of radiators, which might not look larger, but you'd need something like aluminum radiators that have fins in them that are molded just so you've got a larger surface area. An air source heat pump is a renewable and as such if it's fitted correctly you will get a very very efficient uh, system within your home. Um, gas boilers still run on fossil fuels at the moment so it's not really the, the, the boiler that's the problem it's the fuel. Um, if we could clean up the fuel perhaps this scenario would change so it's not cast in stone but we're tending to move away from fossil fuels at the moment and towards um, greener uh, electric based solutions simply because we have more renewables now plugging into the electric grid um, so therefore heat pumps become a multiplier of green electricity rather than a divider of, of bad electricity um, and a boiler simply burns fuel so there's no way of actually making that green. If you have solar panels on your roof that produce green electricity, the heat pumps will use that electricity and therefore you end up with a very, very green solution. You can't do that with a boiler. Well, an air source heat pump makes low flow temperatures, whereas a boiler might have 70 degrees, which means it's too hot to, hot, too hot to touch on your radiators. Um, a, air source heat pump would comfortably not want to be much more than 40 45 degrees which means you can actually touch it and hold on to the radiator it convects rather than radiating so we need bigger radiators we need underfloor heating we need those kinds of, of products we also need an efficient house because if you have low flow temperatures you can't just have the heat going into the room and dissipating before you feel the effect of it um, so it's ideal with efficient houses and large surface area um, emitters such as underfloor heating and radiators.
The earlier you get somebody involved that is going to put renewables into your property, the better it is. In fact, that's true for all services. The more you plan before you start building, the easier it is to mitigate clashes. But that aside, air source heat pumps are crucial that the design is absolutely spot on. You want to know exactly how efficient the house is, how you're going to live in the house, um, what the floor finishes are going to be, because that affects the efficiency. Even prior to building reg stage, you would get the um, specification done. So you know exactly how big the plant is, where it goes, where all the stuff goes. Have you got a big enough plant room to put it all in? What, the last thing you want is to have a utility and a plant room combined and you simply don't have enough space to put everything in. One of the things that we find quite a lot, you go on site and you've got a plant room that is also a utility. It's got three doors on it and all the doors open into the utility room and there's hardly any space for anything else. Pocket doors and things need to be designed in just to if make the space more efficient. If we look at three different solutions from a cost perspective, if we took one as a boiler, say your standard, you want to put a boiler in, then we look at air source heat pump and then we look at a ground source heat pump. For the same size house, your boiler installed might cost five or six thousand pounds installed. The air source heat pump installed to the same finish with a hot water cylinder um, probably cost you about twelve to fifteen thousand pounds, of which currently there's a renewable heat incentive so you'll get some of that money back. A ground source heat pump would probably be for the same size house because you've got quite a lot of groundworks going into it you're probably looking at somewhere around 18 to 22,000 pounds depending on the nature of the groundworks and of course the quality of the, um, the, the brand that you're buying into. The controls on air source heat pumps are um, not usually ones that you want to change if you are the homeowner yourself. Very often it'll get commissioned, leave those commissioning things alone. As I mentioned, it runs a bit like a fridge, just the same as you don't need an app for your fridge. You simply go and make minute adjustments, think, you know, something's freezing up, I'm going to change it slightly, or defrost it. Um, you, you, you don't have to do too much to it. Um, but because a boiler is more reactive, you, you can actually adjust them. What you would need in the house is room by room heat control, for instance, so that you don't just have a controller on the landing that now controls all the bedrooms. You want control in every room. And that is absolutely easy to do. Even if you're not redecorating, you could put motorized valves wirelessly on every single radiator and that gives you individual room control. So you would be setting that up on your app and that would then in tell the heat pump whether it should come on or off at that point. The heat pump also monitors the outside temperature, it's a thing called weather compensation. So it knows if it's um, zero degrees outside, it knows it has to be at a certain running temperature. If it's 12 degrees outside but you still need some heating inside, it knows that it can run actually at a lower temperature. So it's reactive according to the way it was commissioned. And that's why you tell it that you need heat in a room and it then works out how much heat you need. Obviously the places to look for information about air source heat pumps, first of all, the home building renovating exhibitions and the online shows and also the website, you know, there's loads of information. You could then also look at the Energy Saving Trust. They, they are information for the renewable heat incentive, so they will be able to tell you what the latest information is. Um, if you can't get hold of them, off gem always um, have a, an information site as well that you could look at for renewable heat incentive and the pros and cons of, of heat pumps. The, the best thing for me is looking at case studies of people that have done this before and talking to guys that specialize in it. If you talk to a salesperson, they're going to tell you that it's great. So bear that in mind. Get the information and know you want one before going to the salespeople, but case studies and independent people. If you go to independent consultants, they will charge you, but they will give you the advice based on what they see, not because they're trying to chase a sale. And as I say, with case studies, always try and get those guys later on as well and say, a year later, you might see a case study from a year ago, ask them now, is it still as good as it was or have you had to do some tweaking on it? because it's a real bit of kit 
um, and they're brilliant in certain circumstances and not so good in others. And just make sure you've got your expectations right before installing it.